All right, everybody, what's going on? What's going on? That's my DJ Ryan Wolf. That's who's DJing like that. Gotta always promote my fam. That's what's up. Well, welcome back to another Lockout Men podcast show. I am your host, Lockout Men. And I am here with another podcast guest for you guys today. This young man comes by way of uh, YouTube. I've seen a couple of his uh, YouTube videos. I checked them out. Uh, he's also a prime driver as well as a PSD instructor. Am I saying that correct? Yes, sir. All right, all right. So we're going to get into it. We're going to get into all of that with this young man and more. So I want to welcome to the show. Hold on right quick. Got to get it up there. There we go. I want to welcome to the show my man, Twisted Big D. What's going on, brother, man? Oh, not much. Just doing my thing out here, training, getting folks ready to the next journey of their life, trying to better people. All right. All right. All right. So be uh before we get into all this good prime stuff because you know I got a lot of I got a few people that uh that comes up in my comment session saying that I that I bash prime I talk down prime and and I talk about prime and all like that but see what they don't what they what they don't realize I I actually like prime I mean you know it's a uh, you know, I, I really think Prime for like new drivers, for like new jacks that's coming in the game is uh is uh it's pretty, you know, pretty good for a starting company. As now what I can say and what I will say and what I will stand by is that you guys over there do have some bad trainers over there. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, some people may agree with me or may not agree with me on that, but uh but you know we got the good There's ones. Good and bad at every company. Yeah, we got we got you the know good. What I'm saying? Yeah, we got the good ones. We got the good ones. All right, man. So where uh where are you out of? Where where are you from, bro? I'm from Lubbock, Texas, but I've moved to Ozark, Missouri, so I can train out of the Springfield Terminal over here in uh, Springfield, Missouri. Okay, okay. So so born and raised in Texas, or or you you just live? yes I. I was uh, born in Odessa. That's where the oil patch is. So oh, okay. I lived there for a while, and then I moved up to Lubbock, Texas, where I worked as a correctional officer for 13 years. And okay. they had a budget cut, so I had to do something. So I looked into trucking, and here I am today. Okay, okay. 13 years in the, in the, in the uh, corrections field, man. So did, did, did they have any opportunities for you to, like, go go to another corrections uh place or it was just across the map it was across the map budget cut so like once that happened it was like i went from making the overtime making about sixty thousand a year to thirty two thousand a year because i was mm. putting in that overtime so once that happened i had to do something i was gonna lose my house and everything oh that was amazing i came out here cut. trucking and never had to look back Man, that was a major cut right there, man. From sixty to thirty, that's half. That's half your wages right there, bruh. Yeah, I was working seven days a week, twelve hour shifts. I mean, it was it was hard. I was always at work. I was only home. We were on an eight day cycle, so I only got to go home one day out of eight days. Bruh, how pretty much? How how did that affect the family life, man? I mean, eight. Whoa, seven and one. How how that how that affect family life for you, man? Oh, it, it was hard. My, even with me coming over the road, my wife was all like, hey, I'm used to you not being home. So, like, it was it was kind of a game changer right there. She was all like, I'm already used to you not being home. So now I started PSD training. I get to come home more. Now she's all like, man, you're at the home too much. It's time for you to go over the road. <laughs> She wants you to she wants you to get back out there. She was comfortable with you being gone. She was she was cool. She she was cool with 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 your work life, uh, being a corrections officer. Yeah, because we she got a what happened was she was working at the time and then we had kids and we worked opposite shifts. And I was never like she was working at uh Walmart. She worked during the day, I would work the night shift 
and we both took care of the kids. And then I realized, I was all like, man, if I do like three days of overtime a month, I make what she makes in the entire month. So I started doing overtime and we have more kids that got more expensive. The next thing I know, I'm working there every day, but like maybe two or three days a month. How many kids you got, bro? I got four. Oh, you got four? All right. You're perfect father, man. That's what's up. That is what's up, man. How your kids feel about you uh, being a truck driver? Oh, like my boy, he loved it. Uh, my oldest, she kind of took it hard at first. She was all like, she was like, man, you, like I, you were in my life and now you're not. Like, you know, she was doing bad in school. She got a, we got her a counselor and she started like feeling better because at least whenever I was at in the prison system, she was all like, you would come home every night, like mm -hmm. for a couple of hours, I would at least see you like an hour or two and to not seeing you, but like maybe four days a month at the end of the month or something. Yeah. Kids, kids so it, take it, it kind of hard. Yeah. Kids take it a little hard when they're, when their parents is away from them for, for uh, a length of time, man. So at least she got it. At least she got it to work out. She didn't turn into she didn't turn into a bad seed. At least she caught it early. You know what I'm saying? So in the prison system, man. Yeah. So what was what was your experience uh, in a prison system? What, did you have to did you have to break up any prison fights? Uh, any situations like that? Oh, we we had it. Like we would. Um have to maintain security so like if there was a fight we wouldn't like jump between them because you never know if there was a weapon or what was going on we would use chemical agent call for additional staff you know we would lock down the whole building contain it and then you know break it all up and do the investigation see what it was all about who all was involved i mean it's pretty crazy and then i was also my last uh i would say 10 years of it i was working in a psych facility moffert at at this Montford unit in Lubbock, Texas. That's how I ended up in Lubbock pretty much. And we dealt with the psych. So if these guys would cut and they would be bleeding and you would have to suit up the team, five people on a team, first guy with a shield, and we would have to go in there and get them and restrain them so it wouldn't hurt itself. And then we would have to take them out, get them stitched up. I mean, it was pretty wild. Never know if you're going to come home at the end of the day after a shift like that. Do you – do you have to go to do you have to go to some type of training or some type of school to get in a to get in a correctional uh facility? Yeah. Yeah, we took a little academy. There's a little academy, it's about three weeks long. They teach you self defense and all kinds of stuff. A lot of people I was a trainer over at the prison system too. I wasn't a trainer at the academy, but I trained the new people coming in. And the hardest thing was to get the people to understand that we're not here to punish these guys. We are here to make sure that every, everything runs smoothly, like the building schedule runs smoothly. Nobody's getting hurt. We don't want, like, that's the main thing. The, the main thing that they're in prison for, a lot of people think prison is the punishment. Well, that's not the punishment. The punishment is the loss of their life. Like, that guy lost 10 years of his life. 10 years he could be spending with his kids. Ten years he could be spending with his family. He missed birthdays, everything. Like that's the loss. That's the punishment of prison. It's not being inside prison and getting mistreated. You know that was the hardest thing to teach some of these new people coming in because they saw that they're all like they shouldn't get TV. Hey, look, he's been good while he's in here. He's earned the right to watch TV. Leave him alone. You know you had some bad apples in there that give us all a bad. Um, bad name you know like a bad impression people think correctional officers are all all bad and they just wire people up and they treat people like like trash but there was a lot of us good ones that were just like we did our job we had the respect of the offender population because we weren't in there just messing with them and the only thing we have working for us is our word if i gave someone my word then i would have i needed to do whatever it was like it could be as simple as bringing a roll of toilet paper to them you know, if if I told them I was going to do it, I did it. So that's all that's all we had, and that's all they have. So that's how you kind of deal with people like that. It's a respect thing, always being a man of your word, because that's all you have in there. So did so did the guys in there? What what was some of the guys was in there for? Was was some of the guys was you in a prison that 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 held the hardcores, or was it medium, or was it 
Was it light? What 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 was the what what was some of the guys in there for? I've I've had uh, any I've worked uh, around anyone that's been in there for drugs to mass murders, like all in between. Like I've I've been around serial killers. Like one of the worst ones in Texas was the um, was uh, James Albright. He was known as the Eyeball Killer. I was around him. You know he the what the serial killers all have in common is whenever they look at you, it feels like they look right through to your soul. It's kind of a weird feeling. I had a fleet manager at Prime that I did not like going and talk to at all. I I didn't want to go see him at all because he had that same look in his eyes. So I was all like, ooh, you look, I feel like you're looking into my soul. I'm staying away from you. Okay, okay, okay. So you said this, uh, this what was the guy's name? James Albright? He was a serial killer from Dallas? Yeah, yeah from Dallas. They called him, his nickname was the Eye, Eyeball Killer if you uh, Google him. Eyeball Killer. Oh, my God. You was in, wait a minute, you was in with this guy right here? Man, he looks, <laughs> whoo. Yeah, he, he he looks scary. Charles Albright. I yeah, just Charles. It. Yeah, yeah, Charles. Charles but he went Albright. by James. Yeah, yeah. These was so he was a serious. So these the women that he that he that he killed that he murdered. Yeah. Wow. He says he's innocent. Like everybody's innocent in prison. Nobody's guilty. <laughs> you say nobody's guilty. <laughs> you know. Let me ask you this: Is uh, yeah, nobody's guilty. I, I watch uh, I watch episodes of A and E's uh, sixty days in. Um, is the reality of that show? Does that portray prison life? Those those shows I watch those shows too, and those are more of like a jail situation to me. Like it looks, those look more like jails because uh, jails are always overpopulated and stuff like that. Our prison system in Texas, it wasn't overpopulated like that. So we all had they were in their cells. There was more control. We didn't have the doors open where you could just go into the room. The doors were shut. If open doors like they have on that show, uh, people are going to get beat up inside those cells. Okay. And we didn't have all the cameras like they have on that TV show. So Okay, okay. You know, it was – a lot of that stuff's real, though. Like, a lot of that stuff, like the fights, um, the gang the gang activity, like, uh, that stuff's real. Like, we would find people with cell phones inside the Texas pen, uh, penitentiary. Like, how they get these cell phones? That's They're a good question. Like a that's, what I, that, it in visitation. that's what I want to know. How How is Officers, it possible? How How is it possible for them to – for don't don't you guys pat the, the the people down when they come in to visit their loved ones? Yeah, we do, and then also officers bring it in. Like we, there was one time in visitation, a woman put the phone in the baby's diaper. So whenever she would hand the baby across, he got the phone out. But you know, we search them as they go back in. It, it's real sneaky. They're real sneaky with everything. Uh, when the drones started coming out, we were told that drones were coming across dropping stuff in too so what? i mean there's a lot of ways i've seen stuff come in through the maintenance like they have a buddy that owns a shop that they're buying barons from and they'll have him mail like drugs in a package with wow. certain barons and they're looking for these certain boxes i mean it's it's wow, wild man so did so you, you wanna, so they you, think on a higher level so so i, I watch I'm, I'm a fan of shawshank redemption and you know the the one guy said it best. He had to come to prison to learn how to be a criminal. <laughs> so yeah. that's what somebody. Oh, they study cops. They love cops. They watch cops all the time in there. They're all like, "Oh, I wouldn't have done that." Oh, they'll be studying it. Then you got your uh, what we call the jailhouse lawyers, the guys that step back and they just read legal work all the time and start working on other guys' cases because they'll pay them like with some soups or candy or whatever. They'll pay them. That's their money. They'll pay him to work on their case so they know what to tell their lawyers and stuff like that. It's, it's a whole it's city a whole, in there. a whole nother world up in there. You spent 13 years up in there until they uh, until they pretty much slash, uh, slash you guys out, man. So from there, you, uh, from there you jumped into trucking. Uh, so that what was your inspiration in between to to jump from being a correction officer 
to becoming a uh, to becoming a truck driver? Well, I was going for the oil field instead of truck driving, and I had a friends out in the oil field, and they were waiting to see who made the president. Because if su- such and such got president, they were going to shut down because they were going to put restrictions on the oil field. So. If the other person got it, then they were going to drill like crazy. So I needed something in between. So my buddy told me, he goes, hey, man, last person to get hot, uh, laid off in the oil field is a truck driver. Go learn how to drive a truck. Come back, drive the trucks out here, like the water trucks, the fracking trucks, you know, stuff like that. I was like, cool. I came out here, drove for Prime, and then I have family out there in the oil field. They're always getting laid off. I'm all like, man, I really don't want to do that. I said, you know what people always got to do? They got to eat. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm carrying food now, so people are going to always eat. So I never went. I hear I, I hear the term oil fields all the time, and I hear truck drivers always saying that there's money to be made in the in the oil fields. Being that you was one in the oil fields, talk me through what was the oil fields about. Like, what did you actually, actually have to do? Did you have to actually go in a oil field, or was it something, something else? Talk to me through your eyes what the oil fields is about. Like, if I was driving a truck, it would probably be a water truck, and all they do is they they go from a tank and they pick up water from this tank. They'll fill up their tanker, they'll drive it over to the oil field, and they'll dump it. And the way that they get paid the big money is on that double and triple time overtime. So what the tanker guys do is they're working pretty much 20 hours a day, four hours off. And what they're doing is as soon as they hook up the tank to fill it up, they, they'll time it. They'll know how long it takes it to time it. So they'll time it, and that's when they sleep. They'll wake up should be filled up they take it to the job site and like you're on back roads like dirt roads mud roads whatever you're getting it to the actual um drilling spot and you're dumping it into like a a dirt pit that they drove dug out that they put tarps on that you fill it up with water the more loads you do the more money you make and you're just going back and forth all day so do you so you guys don't have to so you guys don't have to this is all through texas right yeah, through Texas, a lot of it is. There's other states that have oil fields, but main ones are in Texas. Main ones is just, so. How long? How how long was it? Uh, how long was it when you was driving the oil fields before you decided to? Uh, oh, I I didn't go to the oil field. I was I was that was the plan. I just oh. went ahead and stayed at Prime. Oh, okay. So the idea was to go to the oil. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Yeah, so, yeah. So you the uh, plan was. So you so you went to Prime. How how long you been driving all together? Almost four years. Four years in October. Four years in October. All, all four years with Prime. All four years with Prime. All right. So with Prime, man, they they brought you 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 went up to Prime. You got your. I'm assuming you got your license through them as well. Yes. Yeah. All right, so getting your life. I had a great trainer. So it was one. It was one and done. Great trainer. Yeah. It it was one and done with you uh, on the training side. Yeah, yeah. And then once I like, he was he was great. Like he had a lot of uh, pride in what he did, and he like did it to the fullest. Now TNT was hard though. PSD part was awesome. We were both awake. He's telling me. Then we came to TNT part, and he's all like, "Here, here's the keys. To drive. Let's go." I'm all like, "You're gonna go to bed?" You know, I was kind of scared. I was all like, "What? I just barely got my license, and you, you're like trusting me to drive all night? Like, so wow." So and then we like, so was he get into it after a while? Two people living in a truck. It's kind of rough. Yeah, it is. It is. It was rough with me. Is it so during the during the training process? You came in four years ago, so the training process back then is different between the training process it is now, right? A uh, little. Some things have changed. It's still pretty much the pro, same process. You you still have to do the PSD part. It's still um, from the time you get badged here, you have to wait at least. 14 days before you can take the test. I mean, like, a lot of it's still the same. 
as whenever I first came in. But the only things that the main change that we had was the TNT part went from 30,000 miles to 50,000 miles. That was the main change we had. Wow. Why? Wh- I came in under 30,000 miles. All right. So break down the acronyms, man. What what do PSD mean and what do the TNT mean and this, that, and the third mean? What what all that means? P- PSD is um, prime, prime student driver. That's whenever we're we're getting you to get ready for your test. So, like, we're either you go on – some guys take their students over the road. They teach them everything. They're, they're actually hands-on learning, and they're getting ready for their test. They'll come back, learn everything, all the backing. They'll learn their pre-trip. They'll learn how to drive safely, and then they test out. Once they test out, they're now hired on, and their year contract starts from then. They'll go to this phase called TNT. That's where you and another driver is training in teams or training and trainer is that's, what it's called. I call it training in teams because train, that's what you're doing. You say, but, train, you say trainer. You say trainer and trainee. And trainee. All right. Yes. That's what it's called, but I call it training in teams. I think it sounds better. So how? But pretty much you're running. You're just running as a team truck, and your trainer's there to help you out and teach you, like, the paperwork, the business side. Stuff like that. So, so PSD. How how long you got to be in the PSD phase? Yeah, you have to be in it for fourteen days from from the day you get badged. You'll have four days, three to four days of orientation. That's where they're checking all your paperwork. You're doing simulators. You're driving a truck. That's a simulator. You're um, doing a bunch of paperwork and computer-based training that's whenever you become a psd is when you get badged so it's from the time you get badged 14 days is the earliest you can test okay and then in the tnt is five is fifty thousand miles what what is that in terms what what is what is that in terms of days and months fifty thousand miles i tell i tell my students count it as 5,000 miles a week and add another week for your home time. That's what I try to tell my guys. So I say 5,000 miles per week. That's 10 weeks plus a week of home time. That's 11 weeks. So 11, at the earliest. So 11 weeks. We looking at about three. We looking at about two months and some change. Close to three months. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah, and it's gonna be more than it's gonna be more than the than that time because that just gets you on the list to get a truck. And then you go on a waiting list till they have a truck available for you, and you stay with that TNT trainer, and you're still doing miles until they have a truck that's available for you. Wow, so that's, it's a little bit longer than that. That's a long that that's a long time. I mean, it, it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, for a new for a new person to come out. And and to go out with a trainer for that long, I mean, do do, I mean, you say you did thirty thousand, and they they upped it twenty extra thousand. And I I, I talked to uh, yeah. I talked to a couple of uh, prime trainees, and one of them had to go out and do another twenty because of uh because I think she was in a accident or something like that, and she had to she had to go out and do another twenty. So that's like what seventy. Jesus, man. Yeah, that's if you get critical events, if you get some critical events, accidents, or tickets, they can add on 10,000 extra miles for each one. Wow. So that's probably what happened to her. She probably had some critical events and it added up to an extra 10 or 20,000. So I I, I guess it'll be. You got to look at the brighter side. I guess it'll be safer to say. The brighter side is when you finish. Mm hmm. I guess, I guess it's safer to say. Uh, I, I guess it's safer to say uh, that Prime is kind of strict with with their training process. You agree? Yeah, they they want the best. We want we want the best drivers we can put out. Like right now, I'm in I'm transitioning my training because I I figure that I, like my I've only had this whole time. I think I'm at like 78 to 80 students right now. And the whole time, I've only had one person fail the driving test. So 
I'm good on my driving. Like I'm real strict on driving. I make sure I got some safe drivers. My pre-trip is the best it can be, you know, pre-trip what it is. Mm -hmm. And then the backing, I've, I've tr I'm transitioning myself from the point to actually, we're going to know how this trailer moves and we're going to make sure we know how it moves and put it in the spot without any point. So I'm stepping up my game. I just tested out a guy, um, Wednesday on truck driving or just working it in there, whatever you want to call it, with no point system trifecta. So he passed all three at the same time at the same. And one day he got a bonus. I got a bigger bonus and you know, I was super stoked. And then tomorrow I'm testing out another guy that I taught the same way and he's going to try to too. So how, like, I'm just trying to step up my game. How, how long you been, how, how long you been training with prime and how did they get, how did you, uh, migrate into their training program? Like, did they come and ask you to do it? Man. Was you there for like a year, three months, six months before they asked you to become a trainer? What, 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 what did they do to come at you to ask you to come in and train for them? I was here. I was here for about a year and like three months. And my teammate, I came in with a teammate, so we were running team. And he decided to go his separate ways. And I decided that I said, you know what? That's a loss of revenue right there. Whenever I lose my teammate, mm -hmm. so I was all like, I was all like, well, I hear training pays good, so let me try training out. And then I found out that if I really don't trust somebody, I can't sleep while they're driving the truck. I go to bed every night like. Oh Jesus, take the wheel, you know. <laughs> but um, that's that's whenever I started this PSD training, and um, I, I love it. I love the, getting people their CDL, like bettering people. That's what I feel. I feel like I better everybody. Like I just, you went from like you could have went from living at the Salvation Army to coming to Prime, and I just put that CDL in your hands. Now you, now at a minimum, you're making what 50,000 a year at a minimum okay. like my goal is to better people after i after i test my students out once they got about nine months in i'm already on the phone with them like hey it's time for you to become a trainer because i want to better everybody i want them making what i'm making i want them to take a cut of the pie you know all right it's only fair so so twisted man do 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 prime got the book of youtube man I mean, it seems like everybody in their mama has a YouTube page. Even even the new jacks that goes up to Prime. Do did do Prime got like some type of uh some type of a uh, media uh media thing for you guys? Do they do they talk about you guys going on YouTube no. to promote the company? No, they don't. Like um but I hear that all the time, and people always ask me if I'm making money off of my YouTube. I'm all like, I'm at barely 500 subscribers. Like, I'm not making any money. Prime doesn't give me extra money to promote Prime on my channel. And if you watch my channel, a lot of times I'm all telling people, hey, do your research before you pick a company. Like, something might work out better for you because I don't want to make somebody's decision. I'm coming to Prime. And then they blame me because they didn't like Prime. It's not working out for them. So I'm always telling people, do a lot of research on where you're going to go. Main thing, The main thing people are all doing these YouTube videos is they're looking for um, the referral bonuses. So they're, they're really um, looking for the referral bonuses. They're trying to make that referral money and all that stuff. I, on my channel, like I have a little link in there that, send you to that I, i'm not like begging people like for referral bonuses if they give them to me they give them to me if they don't i could care less i'll still train people like i train people that come in from other people's youtube all the time i'm all like they're all like yeah i put down such and such i watch them i'm all like hey that's cool man Let, well let's get you through this you know okay I don't, I, to me i don't care about a referral bonus i started youtube as a um as learning like teaching my students so like the way it started i had a guy that couldn't learn his pre-trip from the paper couldn't learn it from standing out there couldn't learn it from me watching me but he came and he came and did this weird pre-trip that he learned off of a swiss video and i was all like some of that will work but it won't i said let's make a video together i made a i made pre-trip videos and then um he asked me he called me a while later he goes hey can you make another video about sliding the tandems and this 
So I started out making videos, different videos like that, and it's just grown to what it is today. Okay, okay. Well, we don't get, Prime doesn't pay us nothing for it. It'd be nice if they cut me a little check for it. Like, I'm cool with that, too. I mean, you, know? you I mean, I you think there's money. a lot of, there's a lot of people that's, I mean, there's a lot of drivers that drive for Prime, and they, and, and they do have YouTube, and they using, just like you said, they using YouTube not only to promote the company, but to you know to to jump for their uh for their what do you call it the 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 referral bonus you know what i'm saying so with yeah. you know I, and i'm over here like you know at, at first i i did that with the previous company that i was with because i was not only getting paid by my referrals but i was also getting paid by my you know getting paid by the company itself by you know promoting the company but I stopped doing that because for several reasons. Number one, I went with a smaller company. So that's number one. And number two, I, I just felt that, you know, if I'm not getting paid by the company to promote the company, then why am I promoting the company on my channel? You see what I'm saying? Do that make sense? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so that's... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I... I promote prime because it's man out here at prime like i don't know if you ever been to prime before but it's pretty much like a family and it's something i'm proud of you know so like i'm promoting something that i'm proud of if i wasn't proud of prime and i wasn't happy to be here and i didn't have the big family i have to this day then i wouldn't promote prime but like it's 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 a family over here like our company pigment and he spends all you can eat crab legs. I mean, how much does that cost? Um, the Christmas party, open bars. He's he's like, and I, Rob Lowe's like, hey, I'm gonna have an open bar at my Christmas party because you know what, business people they have open bars at theirs. Y y'all are all grown adults. Be safe. Ha you know, don't drive your. If you're gonna come to the Christmas party, have some drinks. Don't drive. Have you? Ha and he's just he opens up. For, like you to do whatever you want out here you make as much money or as little as you want it's up to you at this company have you have you, you know, that means a lot have you met any other youtubers uh that worked at prime have you have you met any met anybody personally uh i met i talked to busy blake at the pad all the time he's at the pad uh chad rich when chad rich was here chad rich taught me the most about youtube uh, my trainer was um, J Cloth Vlog. He's another YouTuber. Um, I've met um, Kiersey. I met Trucking with Kiersey. She? Yeah, I met Kiersey. Captain Banana. He was one she, of my students. She fell. Um, she she kind of fell off, bro. I mean, I, 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 she's busy. She's doing um TN, uh, TNT and uh, team driving. It's hard. Oh, okay, and um, okay. actually the shoes I'm wearing today, I, my my Air Max I'm wearing right now, they came from No Hippie Truck and he's a good dude. I really like him and I like his channel. He's just real on his channel. Okay. We talk a lot. Okay. Okay. So uh, some of uh, so um, crazy bags I wasn't a fan of and I never like what I had opportunities what, to meet him but I didn't. What, what, what was your what, what was your and I, I know this is, you know, this this it's been a while and you know, and everybody had an opinion on it back in the day, but what what was your opinion on 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 that situation with uh with C B? Oh, uh, I'm I'm staying out of it, but I'm telling you, like, I don't I don't agree with any relationship with somebody that's under you. If you're their leadership, you have a certain standard you need to uphold. Okay, that's. What's I really up. don't want to speak on it that's, too that's much. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. You don't, and you don't have to. Like I said, it's just uh, everybody. Everybody had an opinion on it, and, and it happened so so far, yeah. so far back that you know this this man is probably on the bigger and better things, and you know he got prime in the rear view of his window now. Um. What uh you know in in one of your in one of your videos you you mentioned uh five uh things that can get you sent home from Prime, um without going into yeah. without going in it too deep what what are what are some of the key reasons that that a that a driver get or that a that a student driver gets sent home? 
most of it is dishonesty on your application. Or the other big one is not prime material, which means that you were caught maybe stealing something from prime or you were caught doing something you shouldn't have, like maybe you making rude and unprofessional conducts around a whole bunch of people and you got filed on, stuff like that. That's the main reasons, but one of the biggest is that application. Like they don't want to tell the truth. They're all like, uh, I'm not going to get caught if I put that I. I was, um, if I don't put that ticket, I got back in like a year ago for, for whatever it was, theft or speed in or whatever. They just don't put it on there. Mm -hmm. Crimes about honesty. It's better off to be honest and list everything you can on there than to lie about it. Because once you lie about it, crime doesn't want to mess with you because if you're going to lie about something like that, what else will you lie about? Hmm, you got a point there. You got a point there. All right. That's what's up with that. That's what's up with that. Um, so for you, uh, four years, four years with Prime, man, are do do they talk do they talk you into being the lease driver? Because some of the guys that I've seen on YouTube, like majority of them are are they they went from being a company driver one video and now they're they're lease driver in another video. Do do Prime actually get you to to go in to, to go that route? No, no. It's every, the owner of the company. He he's like, and you if you want to lease, go for it. If you want to be a company driver, go for it. Like Prime does not push either or on you they're all like it's your decision i'm a company driver like that's what i'm staying at i don't want all the responsibilities of filling up a truck paying for the maintenance stuff like that but primes never once like told me as a company hey it, we want you to go lease because you can make more money or this or that like, it's, it's mainly when you're around a bunch of people out here the lease guys are trying to talk everyone into going to lease oh there's nothing better than lease we got our own freedoms. We, we take the truck home whenever we want, you know, stuff like that. And it, it sounds good, but if you think about it, like I do the same thing with my truck. If I want to go home, I tell my fleet manager I go home. You know, if, if I don't, if there's a load and it's not good, like I can tell my fleet manager about it and he can switch it up. He, he'll make a determination on it. He'll be like, you know what, you're right. I could get you a better load than this that they put on you, you know, whatever. But they don't, they don't force you into it these other lease guys lease guys out here man they they think that they're the top of prime like they're yeah. they're they come out here and get around especially the students and they're all like i'm a leaser and they're sitting over here in the campus parking lot in their lease truck and it hasn't moved in like a week <laughs> wow. you know because lease guys <laughs> have that problem with going home and they don't they stop at the terminal and the fleet manager can't get them out because they're all like, man, I'm just going to chill for a while. I'll go negative. I'll get out the hole real wow. quick. So they're over there telling all the new guys coming in, hey, I'm lease. You know, I make all this money. And the new guys are like, they want to hear what's up because they're new and they want to soak everything in. That's a truck driver out there. Not, They don't ever think that that dude's been sitting out here for like three days at the smoke shack. Like, why is he sitting here so long? So that's why, that's why I like with me, I show somebody what I make. Like if somebody wanted to know, I'd be like, look, here's my check stuff. You know, I'll, I'll walk you through it. So I don't, there, I don't sit here and, um, so, oh, I make this much and I won't show them. So there, so there are guys over there sugarcoating, uh, what, 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 what they, oh, yeah. what, what, what they are with, uh, with prime and everything. Okay. 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 That's what's up. All right, so you yeah. so you you are over the road driver, and you, you of course you are in a relationship. You you you're married. You got four kids. Uh, this question probably might be for a, a younger person or a young Jack, but in your opinion, in your opinion, man, you know, is it is it hard for a trucker? Uh, is it hard for a trucker out here to 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 stay faithful in a relationship? What do you think about that? Well, like I tell, I tell a lot of these guys that come out here and they got a girlfriend or like they just got married. I had guys come out here like it's a week after their wedding. I tell these guys, hey, you have to have that good support system behind you. So like your your newlywed wife or your girlfriend, they have to really support you in what you're doing. You know, 
it's it's going to be difficult because you ain't going to see each other every day. Like, it's real hard. I have friends that have been out here. They've been out here for a while. They're always complaining about, like, how they can't keep a relationship or they're, they don't have anyone. And, and I'm all like, dude, when you go on home time, you got to get out the house and go do something. Stop going home and staying home. Go out and meet people. Because a lot of truck drivers, we, we come out here to drive truck because we don't want to be around people. We want to be us in our truck and nobody bothering us. Okay, that's what's up. You know? All right, so if you wasn't in the if if trucking didn't work out for you in the you know in the beginning, what would have been the plan B for you? Honestly, I didn't have no plan B at the whenever I came out here. I was all like, "This is it," and if this doesn't work out, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so like, I was I was worried sick when I came out here. I'll tell you, since I came out here, I've never had to live paycheck to paycheck before. I kind of forgot what that feels like. All right. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right. Well, Twisted Big D, thank you for coming on, man. I really do appreciate you coming on, sharing your time and and your experience uh, with uh, with Prime. Uh, what, what kind of what, what kind of what, what kind of things that that people uh, that new people, including myself, what what kind of what, what kind of things that we we misunderstand about Prime? One of the things we misunderstand about Prime is that you're not gonna come out here and they're just gonna give you a CDL. Like you're gonna have to work for it. That's that's one of the biggest things people need to know that you're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to learn your pre-trip. You're going to have to learn how to drive this truck. You're going to have to learn how to back it. We're about safety, and we will not put an unsafe person out there on the road. So you're going to have to work hard for it. Don't come in here and think it's free CDL. All right. I'll tell you right now, it's not a free CDL. What, it, what, it, what advice would you give uh, these new jacks that's coming into the industry, man? What, what advice or tips that you that you can give for them? Do as much research as you can. Check your local jobs for if you're planning on coming off the road at some point. Always have a like another trucking job to back you up. Like make sure that you're you have a some goal set for yourself. Like you know, make sure that you're gonna do all the research it takes to find the best company that fits you. It might not be Prime. Just do your research, find the best company for you. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, again, brother, man, thank you for coming on and uh, chopping it up with me, man. Taking your time out to uh, to uh, give me your experience and and all that good stuff, man. Uh, if anybody want to uh, get at you, what's your what's your social media outlets? Uh. Twistedbigd at gmail .com. It's on my descriptions of my videos. Thanks for having me. All right, all right, it. all right, all right. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, man, yo, you can do that. Just hit me up in the podcast, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail .com. Or you can go over to the Instagram and hit me up over there. Or if you want to direct get at me, just text me two one six. 6002090. I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this video, man, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to get with the channel, just hit the like, subscribe, uh, share, uh, hit that bell and that all button so you can get all the content like this, man. My cousin, DJ Ryan Wolf. Who, who is that DJ like that? He's going to play us out. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys listening. And I will get back at you guys with another video. Y'all take it easy. I am Lockout Man, and this is Lockout Man Podcast Show. I will get back at you guys later. Y'all take it easy. One love.